In this video, I will tell you my final thoughts regarding the Pocket 4K and the JH5S. Most of you know I've been comparing these cameras for the last two weeks. Remember, I'm only going to be talking about the stuff that I mostly care about, so if I miss something, just ask. If you haven't seen or downloaded some of the test footage I've done, check out this playlist above before watching this so you know what I'm talking about and you know where I'm coming from. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is the recording options. The Pocket will win this one because it offers so much more options to record internally. Different flavors of RAW, different flavors of ProRes. The JH5S will need an external recorder to do such thing. Also, being able to record to my SSD is awesome. When I shot my colleague's wedding, I ran out of CFast 2.0 cards, so I plugged in my T5 SSD on the side, held it on my left hand while holding the camera and the Ronin S with the right. It worked, but it was crazy. The second thing we're going to talk about is the slow motion or frames per second. The Pocket will take this one also because you can actually set more frame rates than just standard 60 or 120. To me, 48 frames per second is the perfect slow-mo, so I love that you can use 48 frames per second. I know the CFast 2.0 I have right now can't record at full raw lossless 60 frames per second, but I can always just upgrade later. Now let's talk about the menus and ease of use. The Pocket 4K will also take this one because of the simplicity of its menu system. I don't like the JH5S menu within the menu. I've had the JH5S for about a year and I still have to scroll to look for stuff. Anamorphic shooting wise, this is a no brainer. The JH5S has an option for anamorphic 4.3 shooting because it has a 4.3 sensor. Slap a two times anamorphic with that 4.3 JH5S and you get an amazing 2.66 aspect ratio. I'm definitely going to miss that. The next thing we'll talk about is the screen. Even though the Pocket 4K has a bigger screen, JH5S takes this one because of its flippable screen. You know, you gotta love that, especially when doing vlog like this, being able to flip the screen so you can see yourself and focus it. The battery life we're gonna talk about, this is gonna be an obvious one. The JH5S will take this because the Pocket 4K has to process much harder data so it uses more battery. To put in perspective, other cameras out there, you'll need to purchase an external recorder to just be able to record raw. The Pocket 4K does this all internally, so that hogs a lot of power. Pro tip, buy Canon batteries, they last longer than off-brand, and no, I did not get paid to say that. Ergonomics, the GH5S will take this one because it just feels great in the hand. It's really small, compact, gotta love that. Finally, the last three items. First is the dynamic range. To my surprise, these two cameras were actually pretty close, but processing RAW in post-production gave the Pocket 4K the edge. You can push and pull in RAW just beautifully. Now in low light, okay, if you're looking for a camera that can shoot low light up to 6400 ISO without doing too much work, the JH5S wins. The JH5S footage comes out cleaner straight out of the camera because noise reduction and sharpness are applied to the V-Log. But if you are willing to noise reduce and add sharpening in post, then go for the Pocket 4K. The Pocket 4K also gives you more dynamic range, and shooting raw gives you the ability to push and pull in post, change white balance, so forth, whatever. Now, having baked in vlog is probably the reason why people said that my GH5S looked like video in my samples, because it was too sharp. And I know Vlog is flat, but it's not as flat as raw film curve. The last thing we'll talk about is the price point. The GH5S is $2,400 while the Pocket 4K is $1,300, and that's including the Vinci Resolve. And I know what you're thinking, that's a no-brainer. Well, that could be if you're mainly shooting video, but what if you want to use the GH5S for stills too? Well, in that case, good luck deciding. Me, I have the 6D Mark II for stills and a Pocket 4K for video. Now. It was nice when I had the JH5S for both stills and video, but now we're just gonna have to make do. We can't treat the Pocket 4K like a stills camera because it isn't. So, in my case, I have to bring a stills camera. I'm sorry I was reading from a tablet because I can't memorize all that stuff. But yeah, I hope I helped you guys out as far as trying to figure out uh, between these two cameras. I know these two cameras are completely different. And I hope you guys had fun. I do have more videos coming out from now on with the Pocket 4K. Now I'm actually trying to determine which camera I'm going to compare it to just for fun.